Hey guys, kind of like this. We are at the end of the end of days. I just want to remind everybody that our God is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. At his wrath, the earth trembles and the nations are not able to abide his indignation. You can read about that in Jeremiah 10.10. 10. The prophet Ezekiel specifically described earthquakes as preceding the war of Gog and Magog. In uh, Ezekiel 38.20, it says, Mountains shall be overthrown, cliffs shall topple, and every wall shall crumble to the ground. Guys, we are seeing this taking place with more frequency and intensity. I personally believe the rapture is upon us. I believe we will be raptured before this war of Gog and Magog takes place. Hey, I'm just thinking out loud here. Many also refer to it as the Ezekiel 38 war. Guys, it's like this. The days are dangerous and very evil. We are in the perilous times the Bible talked about. We are in those times that the Bible warned us about. But it's like this, guys. Fear not, because our God hears our groaning. You know, members of the body of Christ suffer from afflictions of a wide variety. Some face martyrdom for their faith. Others lose their freedoms. And many endure severe opposition to their faith. We all fight off the relentless attacks of our enemy, and that's Satan the devil. I know many saints who are hurting because of cancer, other ailments, and grief. The afflictions of this life, along with aging, have a way of catching up to all of us. And like the ancient Israelites, we groan like they did for 40 years in the wilderness. Guys, we are living in a wilderness, trust me. But I try to remember how the Apostle Paul connects our anticipation of the rapture with our sighing amid the many hardships of life. In Romans uh, chapter 8, verses 23 through 25, it says, And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Guys, the Lord hears the cry of our hearts as we long for him to appear and take us to glory. The Lord is not distant as some imagine him to be. He sees, he hears, he feels our grief. You know, Jesus was touched by a feeling of our infirmity and, and God's our deliverer, just as he was for ancient Israel. Some day soon, the prophetic words of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 through 17 will be in past tense, and we will rejoice with our Savior in glory. And those verses of Scripture say, For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Guys, there have been days when it seemed as though the perfect time for the rapture had long since passed. We see the tears of loved ones and watch as violence, wickedness, deception, 
and, and, and lawlessness explode in our world, we wonder, we often wonder, how much longer, Lord? You know, I've been there and done that, guys. It is not easy to do, but let's try to rest in the fact that God sees our distress and his deliverer is coming for us at any moment. Let's remain encouraged knowing that the Lord knows all about our distressing circumstances and has our rescue in sight. Just remember the 40 years that Moses tended sheep in the wilderness. You know, it must have felt like an eternity for the Israelites in Egypt. It's likely that they, most of them knew about God's covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and looked for a deliverer to take them to the land promised to their forefathers. Guys, that's kind of how it is with us. We've known about the rapture. We've known about the rapture. Just as Moses tended sheep, Jesus is preparing a place for us to live for all eternity. And just as Israel's deliverance came, so shall ours. Just keep waiting, guys. You know, so much turmoil and uh, I don't know how to describe the calamity that's coming on the earth in the seven-year tribulation, but during the last half of the seven-year tribulation, a much more frightening scenario scenario will exist for the Hebrew people. Once the Antichrist defiles their temple, they will face the darkest time in their history. In the end, only one-third of them will remain alive. You know, the prophet Zechariah, speaking for God, wrote these words about this future time of peril. And it's found in Zechariah 13, verse 9. And it says, And I will put this third into the fire and refine them as one refined silver and test them as gold is tested. They will call upon my name and I will answer them. I will say they are my people and they will say the Lord is my God. Guys, that's exactly what you and me can say. The Lord God is our God. Zechariah 14 verses 1 through 8 describes the arrival of Israel's future deliverer, which is referring to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he will fight for Israel as a mighty warrior, and he will destroy all the armies that will have come against Jerusalem. And he will establish his worldwide kingdom over which he will rule from Jerusalem. You know, just as Israel and Egypt's bondage had to trust in God's timing, that's exactly what we as believers need to do in this present time. We trust God's timing. Guys, our deliverer is coming. I know we often groan because of personal pain or that of those close to us. At other times, it's because of a world descending into lawlessness and wickedness in the likes of which we once thought impossible. We know our deliverer is coming. Just like Moses delivered the people of Israel from Egypt's bondage, our deliverer, Jesus, is coming to deliver us from the bondage of this one world order that is taking over the whole world. Then we shall be with the Lord for all eternity. He surely is coming to catch us up, to meet him in the air. And as we wait, let's remain confident that God is always aware of the struggles and pain of those who belong to him. He sees, he hears, and he loves us more than we could ever imagine. Jesus remains ever mindful of the promises we hold dear to our hearts. He's preparing a place for us in heaven, like I mentioned. You can read about that in John 14, verses 2 and 3. The Lord will surely come for us before the judgments of the day of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 10. God's timing often mystifies us, but we trust his purposes, knowing Jesus 
will arrive at the perfect time. Let's allow the breath of the Spirit of God to breathe hope into the most distressing areas of our circumstances. Our Deliverer stands ready to rescue us and will surely do so at any time. Guys, Jesus wants to rapture us more than we want him to rapture us. Guys, let's continue to pray for him to come soon. Glory to God, glory to God. I cannot wait for that blessed day. I cannot wait for that blessed hope. We will be caught up. We will be harpod so. We will be forcibly seized off the face of the earth, out of harm's way just in the nick of time. And we will see our Lord Jesus face to face. And he's taken us to a place to abide with him forever and ever and ever. Guys, hang on to the blessed hope (laughs) because it's on the way. I love you guys and I'll see you in the air. Much love and Maranatha. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, many have thought they missed out on what was promised simply because time has passed longer than expected. The timing is still on the table as being on time. Naysayers will claim that you are wrong based on the fact that it has not happened yet. I do not consider your critics within my timing. I am not interested in all of the reasons why you feel you may be disqualified. I am the only one who calls someone ready and qualified. You are my chosen and beloved, even when the circumstances are not in your favor. Keep pressing in and you will reach the breakthrough just on the other side. You are a sweet song before me this day. Forget about what went wrong and decide to meditate on what is moving in the right direction. I will make the crooked path straight and what was blocking your progress will be destroyed. When you realize that the enemy fears what you have become in me, you will clearly see the obstacles looking to derail you. Even when you thought you were counted out, I counted you in. I am passing over you in this hour. You are in a season of all things becoming new. Open your hearts full of expectation. What was delayed will be handed over to you with interest. Visitations will be experienced far and wide. Get your things in order and your bags ready. What I am doing in this hour will astound you. See the movement and the prophetic and the evidence all around you. You will see my hand move very suddenly and immediately in what I'm about to do. No longer think with the old man thoughts for your eyes are about to behold my glory. It is time for my bride to fully walk in full expectation for that glorious, blessed hope. The dark will run from the very sight of my people. It is coming. See it on the horizon. Trust the signs. Watch with expectation. The dawning of a new day is coming. It is what you have been declaring and waiting for. It is what you have looked for in the night season. In the dark hours of your night, it has been hard to discern that one day has ended and a new one had begun. It has been hard to discern anything. When it is dark, you only see black and white. You only see the glimpses and shadows of what is there. But I assure you, your king is coming. While you were slumbering, I was bringing to completion my plans in the night season to bring you to the place to step into the dawn. So throw off the blankets of the night and get ready to step into your new day. Arise and you will see the way before you. You will see the door you have been searching for in the dark standing wide open. The day has dawned. The time has come. The seeds are bringing to incubate as you are being positioned for a great transition. 
what you have struggled to see clearly will come into focus with greater clarity. Rejoice, for the new day is upon you. The sun is rising in all power. The night is gone and your new day is upon you, says the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother, and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him, and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, an overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself, and sanctify myself. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. I want to thank each of you so much for joining with me for today's video. But I want to ask a very important question. Are you saved? If you're not saved and would like to know Jesus as your Savior, know this. Today is the day for your salvation. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. Just know that today is the day. Guys, there is no do-it-yourself salvation. No one's works will ever get them to heaven. The word of faith says, confess with your mouth Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. And that's according to Romans 10, uh, verse 9. Guys, salvation is so simple. It doesn't take works. It doesn't take faithful church attendance. It doesn't take sacrificial offerings. It is not hard. In fact, salvation is so simple that anybody with a mouth and a heart can have it. If it took works, Many people couldn't do it. If it took a certain level of intellect, some people could never achieve it. If you have never received this free gift of salvation, you can do so today by praying this prayer. Just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, you said in your word, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and that he, he was raised from the dead. I am calling upon his name, the name of Jesus. I now confess Jesus as my Lord. So I know, Father, that according to your word, I am now saved. Thank you, Father, for giving me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and meant it, from your heart, a miracle just 
happened. God swapped your human righteousness for the perfect divine righteousness of his son Jesus. God now sees you as spotless and blameless. In his eyes, you are a new creation. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new. You have received the free gift of salvation, and it will never be taken away from you. Welcome to the family of God.